Right. Right, let's get started, folks. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, folks, today we're going to be looking at an Edexcel GCSE paper, Mathematics A, paper 1. Okay, from the 1MAO slash 1H syllabus. This is the 2013 June paper, and we're going to be looking at that today. Okay, let's make it take it up, please roll it up. Right, let's get started. Right. Question number one starts off with place value. Given that, let me just check that it is working properly, please. Yep. Given that 1793 times by 185 is equal to that, so they give us a fact first. Write down the value of this, so we have to see how has this changed and become that. So let's change color here a bit. So the, the second number here has stayed the same, it hasn't changed. The first number has, has been made 100 times smaller. 1,000 times smaller because 1,793 has now become 1 1.79. It's the same number, but it's been made smaller. So there is no point to be made to move back three places. Now, if you make part of the question a thousand times smaller, what do you reckon happens to the, the answer? So at the moment, this copy down here for the moment. So if you make this part a thousand times smaller, you're going to make the answer a thousand times smaller. It follows through to the, to the answer, so it gets mirrored. So one, two, three. So the answer should be three, three, one point seven zero five, and that's that question done. This like is buzzing. It's annoying me. Okay. Now, if you look at the next, this question here, question B, uh, three, three, one seven zero five divided by one point eight five. This is a variation of our original question there. So let's rearrange that. So let's have a look. So we have here 331705. Oh, so what they're going to divide by 1.85. Opposite time by that is? Divide. So if you divide it normally by 185, you should have got an answer of 1793. So what I've done here, I've manipulated the original question. And we're going to compare that with the question they've given us. So the first part has stayed there. Same. Same. The second part is looks like the original second part, but it's been manipulated by how much? It's been made one, one eight five to get to one point eight five. You're gonna make it a hundred times smaller, isn't it? So we made the bottom part a hundred times smaller. Now this is where the slightly your thinking part comes into it. When you are dividing and you make the number you're dividing by smaller. How does that affect the answer? Does the answer also get smaller like in the previous question or does it get bigger? So, okay folks, go off you go. Don't all shout out once. If you make the but if you make the dividing part 100 times smaller, you have to make the answer 100 times bigger. Why is that? It has the opposite effect. So think of it like money. If I have 100 pounds and I divide it amongst five of you here, you'd each get 20 pounds. If I had 100 pounds and I didn't divide it by 5, I divided it by 2, 50. you get more, you get 50 pounds. So you, as you make the number you divide it by smaller, the answer gets bigger. Okay? So now the answer will become on this. Okay? So the answer will be 179300. Okay? So this effect here on the bottom part of the dividing seems to have the opposite effect on the answer. Okay, folks, are you happy with question number 1? Place value. Right, sir. Smith, can we move it up, please? We need to quickly rub that off. Okay, each one got that down. I need to rub it off. Done? Okay, right, let's get this off the board and get on to the next question. Okay, right. Where is my Right, question number two. Question number two involves percentages and fractions. Right, Mr. Mason asked 240 year 11 students what they want to do next year. 15% of the students want to go to college and three quarters of the students want to stay at school. Now, everybody in this room should know quickly what three quarters of the percentage is. Three quarters of the percentage is? 75. 75%. One quarter is 25, so three quarters is 75. So straight away we can write next to here in the brackets 75%. So we need to be able to convert between fraction and percentage. So a quarter is a very popular, we should, we should know that value is 25%. So three quarters will be triple that, 75%. The rest of the students do not know. 
Work out the number of students who do not know. Work out the number of students, not the percentage, not the fraction. So, right, let's have uh, a few out. We have here 15% and we, we, worked, we know that 3 quarters worth 75%. So what we need to do with these two first, we need to... What do we need to do with them? Add, add them, to work how much we got so far. So 75% add 15% will give us a total of... 90%. 90%. Okay, and in the complete question we have Zishan, how much do you have how much percent do we have? Always in a normal question we have how much percent? Hundred percent. Okay, so the total data value must be hundred percent. And ninety percent has been spoken for, so if we minus them that will give us so ten percent of this two forty are the ones who don't know. Do not know. Okay, goes work out the number. So I haven't finished yet. I've worked out the percentage. So now I have to work out ten percent off. Okay, now some of you might be able to do this question quite quickly in the head, but for the sake of everybody who's watching this video, right? Let's have a look at some technique. Right, Afira, so Ifra, ten percent of two forty. If you want to work out ten percent, we're thinking that one tenth. To work out tenth, we divide by ten. Thank you. So we divide by 10. So Zishan, quick way of dividing by 10, we have lots of zeros. What do we do? Or some zeros? What do you do? Just not one off. So the answer is 24. So 24 students don't know. So the answer for this question is 24 students. Okay, folks, have you got that down? Because we need to, we need to do this question work a bit more quick so that people who follow us on YouTube don't get bored out of their brains. All right, all that down, folks? Should be writing it down as I do it. Okay, so if it takes me to, uh, two minutes to do it, you need to take three minutes to copy down. Five minutes, people are waiting. They're going to be growing old on YouTube, getting white hair. White hairs in the beard. I'm sorry, I mean in the hair. <laughs> okay. If I'm happy with that? Yeah? Okay, are we ready to get rid of it? Okay, right. Alright, let's have a look. Right, okay. Lovely, right. We go there's 16 babies. Question number three 16 babies are born in a hospital. Here are the weights of the babies in kilograms. Are you okay? Oh, that's just. Are you still recording? Okay, so here's the 16 babies' weights in kilograms. Show this information in an ordered stem and leaf diagram. Okay, so can you just bring the stem and leaf diagram up a bit, please? Okay, right, stem and leaf diagram is over here. Okay, that's it, right for now. I'll take up a bit more space and bring this up top of here. That's leave it there, thank you. Right, we need to do a key first of all. So 2.4, let's start with the first data value. So that, if we represent that on the, on the that represents, what does that mean? That means, that means, 2.4 kg. Okay, so 24 means 2.4 kg. So that's our key. So that part of the stem and leaf diagram means 2.4 kilograms. Okay, now, let's have a look at the standard values. We have 2.4, 2.7, 3.5, 4.4, 4.5, 4 4.1 and so on. Now, what's the lowest value? The lowest value starts with like a 2 point something, is that right? And then from 2's we go to 3 point something? Yeah, and then 4 point something, do you have any 5's? Nope. No. So 2 point something, 3 point something and 4 point something. Okay, so we're doing a stem and leaf. Now, ordered stem and leaf is the key word here. What does it mean by ordered stem and leaf? Okay, let's have a means. Ordered stem and leaf. Yeah, ordered yeah. means the numbers are yeah. in order. That's it. Style. So let's look at all the 2 point somethings. So we have here 2.4, 2.7, 2.8, any more twos, Zisha? No. That's it? So you have 4, 7 and 8. 4, 7 and 8. So that means 2.4, 2.7, 2 2.8. Okay, we're happy with that? So what we can do with those now, we can cross them off. So we don't use them again. Okay, please folks, when I'm doing this on the board, if I miss the value, I please say charity hat. Okay? okay? 
Next we're gonna look at the threes now. Okay, so if we're looking at the threes now, we've got 3.5. The last one. Yeah, so how many do you have all together of those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven values. So if we're, which is the, the smallest one? No, 3.0, yes? So 3.0 goes here, 3.0. Alright, I'm gonna go over this in blue just to make sure. I'll put this against my toes. Alright, right, 3.0 which one? What's the next one after 3.0? There's two 3.3s. 3.3s? Three okay, next, uh, Mr. Ramiz. Okay, Ramiz, what's after 3.2? What's the next one? We've got 3.5s uh, and 3, 7 and 8. So? 3.5. 5 and then? 7. And then? 8, 8. And then 8 and then 8. Okay, have we covered everything, folks? Yeah. Have I missed any out? No. Nope. Okay, good. Whoops. Right. Okay, the last one. Alright, let's have a look at a record now. Right, the four values. We have 4.4, 4.5, 4.1, 4.4, 4.1, and also 4.2. So, uh, Afira, which one shall I start with? Which is the smallest four value? Four point? One. And then how many of those we have? Two. Two of them. And then we go on to? Four point? Two. Two. And that's one of them. Then? And four then point? Four point four. How many of them? One. No, two. 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 And then what? How many? And then the last one is? Four point five. Four point five. Okay, let's just quickly add these numbers and see how many we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and we should have 16. So hopefully that should be. That should be enough. Okay, are you happy with that, folks? Okay, right. Let's move the next question up, Mr. Mayor. As you move it up, Mr. Mayor, make it bigger, please. Because these questions are small in algebra in terms of the size and it a bit bigger. Right. Okay, folks, are you happy with these? Now, you'd be surprised how many students get these questions wrong. Ready, Disha? Yes, sir. So expand. Expand doesn't mean like you start eating donut kebabs in the exam and start getting fatter, yeah? I want to expand the, the, this algebraic expression here. So we need to multiply it. Now that 3 outside the bracket means 3 times 2. two. So 3 times by 2, first of all, I'll write it down. 3 times by 2 gives us? Six. And then we do 3 times by? T. Plus T. Make sure you include its sign. 3 times by plus T will give us? Plus 3T. Three plus 3T. Three That's lovely. When you say 3 times by plus, three, uh, plus T, you automatically come out with a nice answer of plus 3T. So your answer comes with your question. So if you miss out the plus, what happens to the minus is even worse. And what sign do you put in the middle? So the sign here is generated from the question itself and not by copying it down. Because if I was to put a minus here, that would become minus and not plus. Okay, we done that? Happy with that question? Okay, Zisha, next question. It goes expand this expression now. So again, we can start with the 3x outside the bracket. We multiply by each item inside. So 3x times by 2x? 6x squared. Excellent. Okay, and then you have 3x times by, uh, let's have Samir, 3x times by plus 5. Plus 15x. Plus 15x. Lovely. And that's that question finished. Oops. Right. So 6x squared plus 15x is the answer to that. Okay, the last one, I'm going to try to squeeze in the bottom. Don't move it, sir. Okay, say so the simplify. This one got an extra word expand, which we mean now is multiply and simplify. So simplify means collecting like terms. So let's have a look. Now, when we start this question, let's do this one in red. We have double brackets, two items there, two items there. So Zisha, where do we start? Uh, At the first item. So M has to time by M. And then has to time by 10. Plus 10. Don't, do not say 10. Because if it's a minus 10, you just said time by 10, you'll get the wrong answer. You'll miss out the minus in the answer. So let's look at this. M time by M is equal to? M squared. M squared. Now we have M time by plus 10. M time by plus 10 will give us? Just 3M. Plus 10M. Oh. M time by plus 10 will give us plus 10M. Okay. No, yeah. Right, next. Zishan, we've done the first item with everything on the other side. Now we're going to do the second item with everything. Okay? That's not how to do the brackets. 
So we do plus 3, plus 3 times by m will give us plus 3 times by 10. Plus 3m. Plus 3m. We have plus 3 times by plus 10 will give us? Plus 30. Plus 30. Lovely. Okay. Mr. Ramiz, have you got that also on? Is that in the picture? Yeah. Okay, right. Now, we have a m squared at 10m at 3m at 30. Now, what do we do here? The m squared, there's no more m squared terms to add, so that stays as it is. The plus 30 is a numerical term, there's no other numerical term, so that stays as it is. But the terms that we can simplify are these two. So we have plus 10m and plus 3m, that will give us all together? Plus, plus 13m. Plus 13 so we have m squared plus 13m plus 30. And that is the final answer to that question. Expand and simplify. Has everybody got that down? Yes. Ready to move on to the next question, next question, folks? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Did you stop just now? Stop. Just yeah, just, okay, all right, let's just start again. Okay, here we go. Okay, folks, sorry about that. We're just coming back. I think I don't know what happened to the camera then. All right. As we were saying before, 5 to 5 is equal to, I'm putting numbers in order now, 3 times by 5 times by 5 times by 7. Seven. Product means times. So 3 times by 5 times by 5 times by 7. I haven't finished yet, so I'm going to simplify that a bit more. I'm going to write it as 3 times by 5 squared, squared times by 7. Okay, so that should be a final answer for that question. Okay, I find this particular method to be one of the nicest and easiest methods. Okay, as I said, folks, if your students like doing the one with the little branches going everywhere, and by all means, carry on. But this is the method that I have on my choice. Okay, Samia, so yeah, have we got that down, folks? Yes? Alright, let's rub this off quickly, move on to the next question. Make it, that's it, Samia, make it a bit more smaller, we'll fit on there. So, uh, Mr. Ramiz, keep an eye on the camera, please. Yeah. Make sure it's recording, it's recording. Yeah, you got 17 minutes. That's okay, good. There we go. It says, Ed has four cards. Question number six. Ed has four cards. There's a number on each card. 12, 6, 15 and a question mark. The mean of the four numbers on Ed's card is 10. The mean. So, Zeeshan, what is the key word they mention here? Mean. Mean. Okay, the word mean doesn't mean like you'd be mean to your friends and stuff. That kind of mean. This is the mathematical mean. Okay, mean is one of the averages, which means add them all up and divide it by how many they are. So we add up all these numbers and we divide it by the number of numbers. I think this is here's a black instead. They're all looking a bit better jaded. Smear, can you jump into the bottom drawer quickly? Give me some uh, more. It's dying on me. Pen, paper, make Okay, wow, this is clever. So we know when we add up these four numbers and divide it by four, because that's what the mean is, add them up and divide by how many are, that the answer should be 10. Because the mean is 10. So this plus this plus this plus this divided by this is equal to 10. Okay, so we've done that. Now, so let's work out. Let's write it down a bit more. So 12 add 6 will give us? 18. 18 add 15 will give us? Just do 15 add 15 add 3. Uh, 30. 33. So 33 add the mysterious divided by 4 is equal to 10. Right, here comes a bit of rearranging. Is it 7? Is it, uh, opposite. Uh, so you've got to work out the missing thing, number here. So this missing number, add 33 divided by 4, divided by 4 is the last action. So you move that first. Opposite divided by 4 is? So we know 33 add the mysterious number is equal to 40. And as was Ramiz said earlier, is the number 7. Now it's more clear, the number is? 7. seven because 33 add 7 is 40. So we can say quite confidently that this number is 7. Okay, done. We call this question a reverse mean question because it's to do with the mean calculation but you're working backwards 
Did it give us the answer? And you got to work out part of the question. Okay, has everybody got that down? Girls? Let me get it down. Okay, let's move on. Right, take this, that's fine, just take a little bit more, take a little bit more, a little bit, that's, that's lovely. Translate, so this particular question here is one of our transformation questions. Translate shape P, I'll read it out because I don't think it will come out properly in the video. Uh, translate shape P by the vector 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is a translation question which is the easiest question we can have on transformations. The first number indicates how much we're going to move the shape to the X. The second one makes sure that how much we move it to the Y. y. Because the Y is minus, we've got to move it down. So what this is saying here is move the shape 5 along the in the positive X direction and then minus 2 means no. then move it down by minus 2. So you've got to get the whole shape, move it across by 5 and down by 2. So let's start off with one corner. Nishan, are you with me? Yes, sir. Here, watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So after doing 5 across, we've got to do 2 down. 1, 2. So this point here goes there. Okay, now, we need to do that to the whole shape to each corner. But since this shape is nice and symmetrical, we can actually cheat it there. Now, that point is 2 squares behind, isn't it? So we can literally reconstruct the shape here. So 2 down. I've got 3 down here. Three, one across, one up, one across, and then two up. So we can only we can literally just move one part and reconstruct the rest. Then it goes uh, trying to this shape P by the vector. Is there anything else on that question? That label it or something or can't. Yeah? Right, so I'm gonna shade this shape in. Okay, make sure yours is actually on the line itself. Use a ruler. There we go. There's that shape. Done. Okay, Fina, are you happy with that? Translation, that sounds straightforward. First letter is the positive x. Second one here actually is negative y because it's minus. We've got to go down. So we had here plus 5, minus 2. Done. Okay, folks, are we ready for the next question? Yeah? Please keep in mind the minutes on the video. I think the maximum video size is 18 minutes. Yeah, and then we'll left. have to stop it, or we'll stop by itself actually. So you got 12 left. Okay, that's right size, but that's fine. Okay, right. It goes, describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. So how did this get onto that? Now if you look at that shape, can I have some suggestions? Is it translation, rotation, enlargement, or a reflection? Rotation. It's a? Rotation. rotation. So, oh, you say that long here. I'm just going to write over here for a moment. So we're going to say it is a rotation. Now if it's a rotation, we've got to tell us how many degrees, how much has it turned around? 90 degrees, 180, 270, and so on and so on. So what does that look like to you, to uh, Ifra? It looks like, because uh, this part's facing up, now it's facing down. So it's gone through how many degrees to, to turn? It's gone through? 180. Excellent, well done. 180 degrees. Now, because it's gone through 180 degrees, we don't need to write clockwise or anti-clockwise because it doesn't make any difference. At 180 is a half a turn. You could even write any half a turn as well. That's your angle there. So, we mentioned the word rotation. We mentioned the angle of rotation. Now, we need to mention the center of rotation. Now, how do we work out the center of rotation? What we need to do, we need to find two corresponding points. So, this point here, this corner, Remise corresponds with that corner. That corner. Yeah. Let's join them up with the ruler. Get a chance to use this ruler. Okay, and get a chance to drop stuff on the floor. Okay, there we go. Bismillah. Okay, that's the first line. Okay, let's change color now. Now we need to find another point and we need to join them up. Okay. Okay, Zishan, Zishan, which point should we take? Can we take, for example, this point here? Yes, sir. Where does that correspond to? That corresponds to? Straight across. That one, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah. So let's join them up now. 
So get a ruler, please. Yeah, do you have rulers here? Okay, ruler. Okay, now let's join them up. Okay, now. Where do the where do those two points intersect? Can anybody tell me? Can they read off on the graph on the on the own graph? Where does it intersect? Y one. one. Intersect at zero, one. That's, that's what we can answer. Okay, so we say rotation, 180 degrees rotation, and it is about. Ooh, this black mark is nice and fresh. Mm. About zero one. So that about side is the center. Or we can even say center of rotation. So these are two equivalent types of language you can use in the question. And this question is worth how many marks, folks? Three marks. One, two, three marks. So make sure you put all the points on. Are we happy with that question, folks? Okay, that's why you happy? Okay, alright. Okay, so may I quickly move the question on to the next question and make it that and a bit more. And okay, that's little enough for the sorry I moved the ruler there. Okay, now that, that will do, okay. Let's so make you move up to the corner, slide the panel basically, slide across the bar. Now so take it up again and find the corner. Lovely. Okay, that's nice and big. Okay, question number eight. Margaret has some goats. Lucky Margaret. The goats produce an average total of 21.7 litres of milk per day for 280 days. The rest of the days the goats have it as a day off. <laughs> Should we say, that's their holiday time. Okay, even goats get holiday. <laughs> they wouldn't get that holiday back home that the game looked every single day. Okay, Margaret sells the milk in half a litre bottles. Work out an estimate for the total number of bottles that Margaret will be able to fill with the milk. You must show clearly how you got your estimate. Now, when students see this word here, uh -huh. right, they think it means just guessing. Okay? Right. Okay, work out an estimate for the total number of bottles that Margaret will be able to fill. Now, estimate does not mean guessing, it means we have to do rounding off. So we have 21.7 uh, litres of milk. Now, if we were going to round that off, what would we round that off to? 22. Okay, we can round that off to 22. If we round it off to the nearest whole number, or if we round it to the nearest 10, 21. it will be 20. So there are two possibilities for that particular question. Okay? 280 days. That already is a nice, I call that a nice chunky number. 280 is got, got like a 10 in there. But we're going to round that off. The highest place value is hundreds with 280. Okay? So if you look at this one here, we've got 21.7. The highest place value is 2, which is 10. So we've got 21.7. So we round this one to the nearest 10. To the nearest. So we round that off to the nearest. To the, we look at the biggest place value. The biggest place value is 10. So we round it to the 10. That gives you 20. This is 280. The highest place value is 100, which is 200. So you round this to the nearest hundred that it gives us 300. Now, if you look at those numbers there, 20 and 300, um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really happy. We call these, I call these numbers chunky numbers, nice big numbers, easy to deal with. Okay? Now, half a litre, that already is a chunky number, in it? Yeah, as it is. Half is a nice number to deal with. We don't need to write it up or down or anything crazy like that. Okay. Now, we need to work out. First of all, how many litres they're going to produce in total? Okay? So the 280 days has now become? 300. 300 days. The 21.7 litres of milk has now become? 20. 20 litres. So if you want to work out how many litres to produce in total, so we're going to have here 20 litres per day time by the 280. Oops, sorry. Excuse me, folks. I'll use the. Wrong value there. Time by the 300. Yeah, 20 liters time by 300 days. And then what we do? That will work out the total number of litrage 
Now, how do we work on bottles they're going to be using? So, each bottle has how many litres? Oh. Half a litre. So, 20 times by 300, well, 2 times by 3 is each one will give us 6. I mean, add on to it 1, 2, 3 zeros. 3 zeros. So, we are producing an approximate estimate 6,000 litres per year. So, they're packing them in half litre bottles. So, what's the next part of the calculation? We divide it by? We divide it by? Half. Okay, most students look at that question and they shout out, Oh yes sir, I know what the answer is. 6,000 divided by half is. Come on somebody give me that same answer. What's 6,000 divided by half? 3,000. 3,000. I was waiting for that. Thank you very much for that. And it's not 3,000. That's the common answer. 6,000, you're dividing it into halves. Yes. Think of it as though you have 6,000 cakes. Okay, you're feeling really hungry, you got 6,000 cakes, you've ordered, come down to your house from Tesco, uh, direct delivery to your house, and you're going to divide those 6,000 cakes into halves. How many pieces would you have? 12,000. 12,000, thank you. I like this. We come towards my way of thinking. Lovely. We have so said 3,000 Yes, exactly. One of those means. Anyway, 12,000, okay, 12,000 bottles. Okay, the question says, uh, work out the estimate for the total number of bottles. So that's the SMS. Okay, you happy with that? When you divide by a half, it is the same as multiplying by two. Let's have a look at this. I know we, we thought about it in terms of the example of cakes, but let's just actually do it mathematically now. For those of you at home, thinking, what, are they, what is this teacher talking about? 6,000. When you divide it by a half. When you divide by a half, when you divide by any fraction, the divide sign Najma quickly becomes a? Time, time. And the second fraction quickly? Upside down. Swap upside down. So now we get 6,000 divided by half becomes 6,000 times by 2 over 1. And 6,000 times by 2 is? 12,000. 12,000 divided by 1 is still? 12,000. 12, Done. So that is actually the mathematics behind that example of the 6,000 cakes from Tesco. And then you divide it into half. Okay. Right, are we happy with that folks? Are we ready to go on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The bees is, is uh, how do you do with the camera? Two minutes. Two minutes left. Okay, right, let's just see if we can finish this in two minutes. That's the, That's easy. Just let me know as soon as it. Okay. Mat and dance cycle are on a cycle track. Each lap mat cycle takes in 50 seconds. Each lap dance cycle takes in 80 seconds. Down and mat start cycling at the same time at the, at the start line. Work out how many laps they will each have cycle when they are next at the start line. So, one's going to be going in 50 seconds intervals. So 50, so it'll be 50, it'll be 100, yeah? 150, and yeah, all the way up to. All the 50 times table, the other one will be the 80 times table. Now, what is the LCM of 5 and 8? The lowest common multiple of 5 and 8 is? The lowest common multiple of 5 and 8. Oh my god. Allah ji, Allah ji, help us, man. These kids are very, very brainy today. Okay, so we have 80, 160 is coming, is 40. Okay, so we're going to get 400 here and. Okay, because it's 50 and 80 will be 400 instead. Yeah. Okay, so work out how many laps they will each have cycle when they are next. So they will... 8 and 5. Okay. 55 seconds. Okay, so after 400 seconds, they will all... They'll, mat, they'll, they'll, kind of, they'll meet at the beginning. How many 50s in 400? 8. Okay, how many 80s in 400? 5. 5. So who's 50? 50 is the top of the mat, isn't it? Yeah. There you go, done. Okay, are you happy with that question, folks? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we're looking at the times tables of 50 and 80, looking for the LCM, but the key is looking at 5 and 8, and that uses 40. So in this case, it'll be 400 because we've got an extra zero on there. So after 400 seconds, they will kind of both match up because that's going to be 80s and they'll at 400 seconds. But this one will take him 8 laps. This one will take him 5 laps because 80 times by 5 is 400, 
and 50 times back is 200. And that's the end of this video. Okay, folks, uh, please uh, join us back on the next video. We're going to hopefully combine these videos together on YouTube.